Okay, I'm back, lecture two. Um, I had to kind of hurry up at the end of the last lecture because I was running out of the 15 minute thing, which, you know, I, I wish they would just give me like a one minute warning or something, but they don't. So I apologize that I had to kind of abruptly shut shop in the last lecture, but I was talking about the uh, temporality of creepiness, right? That it, it literally, slows our experience of um, the affect. Um, it slows down the ways in which we respond, say in a horror film, to uh, a horrible person or a horrible deed. Um, in creepiness, we kind of become lazy and passive recipients of all that's going on and it's you know when it is too late just like in horror uh it is only when it's too late after the 10th dead body is found right in horror we start figuring things out and uh, we even then may not be able to control things that's the excess right there um in creepiness it is when we have invested ourselves too much already in say a character in the life and experiences and behaviors of creepiness that we start hesitating um, that we want to back out from it um, this is also signature of the aesthetic of creepiness that it's a very slow sell right uh, we don't jump out of our seats or start out of our seats like we might in a horror film. Um, but here we kind of slip into a comfortable pacifism. Uh, and I, I, sh I should say, I'm sorry, not pacifism, a comfortable passivity right, that we don't feel the need to react and respond actively. Uh, we are just waiting and watching and kind of indulging in, you know, this character's um, anomalous, almost normal but not really uh, behavior. And by the time we discover the moral dubiousness of this character or uh, the um, by the time we discover our own moral hesitation about, um, say, supporting who we might have been sympathetic towards, uh, by that time, um, it is almost too late, right? That we, we have given too much of ourselves um, over to this character. Um, that is why the slow development of our relationship with the creepy character or the creepy figure is powerful and it's attractive right that is what grips us because it's like an unhealthy relationship that we have spent too much time in right uh, it takes a lot of courage to get out of it and sometimes we might find ourselves resigned to whatever fate is going to deal to us. Um, that sounds extremely unhealthy and it is and um, especially in relationships that involve emotional um, emotional harassment, emotional torture, um, involving misogyny. I mean our last lecture was on misogyny, right? Um, the one that I wrote uh, a long lecture on. Um, especially when we think about those relationships um, it is very often creepy that we were so close to it that we were so familiar with it that we were so invested even in it um, that we find ourselves regretful perhaps but not um, not capable of turning away from it immediately Right. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm rambling, I realize, but I want you to register how the temporality of creepiness operates 
com compare it with how the temporality of horror operates, right? It's sudden, it's in a matter of a day, in a matter of a weekend that, you know, action is all complete. Um, we don't have too many doubts when it comes to horror um, about what is horrible, right? Um, with the creepy, um, we have doubts. And, you know, one of the next films you're going to watch, uh, it's a Hitchcock film and it's a great uh, cusp, right? Hitchcock um, is brilliant, disturbing and disruptive, um, in particular because he straddles the cusp of horror and creepiness. Um, so when we watch some of Hitchcock, we will understand how the temporalities work. Uh, so do pay attention to um, these aesthetic attributes of creepiness. And I'll, I'll talk more about them as we start thinking about the particular example of the king, right? The Burger King ads, uh, the series of ads that Kotsko talks about that are creepy, uh, specifically because they are inappropriate, right? I mean, as many of you noted, why bring in sexual motifs and under undertones? Um, why bring in those, uh, yeah, why bring in sexual motifs and sexual undertones when the ad, the product being sold um, in the advertisement is a breakfast sandwich, right? Uh, fast food. Um, that inappropriateness is part of its creepiness, right? Um, but think about it. It is not completely inappropriate. Why do I say this? No, no. Um, many of you have suggested that it is entirely inappropriate to think about sexual activity and sexuality in conjunction with um, breakfast. Um, but have you heard of the phrase breakfast in bed? Right? Uh, bed is a very intimate space where one is vulnerable, um, one is sleeping, one it, it becomes an intimate site for sexual activity uh, in many cases, right? So the bed and this is where we are registering this, if not consciously, certainly, as Freud would say, in the unconscious, we are registering these connections, right? And that's why the ad is creepy, because we do get some of it. Uh, we almost get it all until, of course, we see this, you know, plasticky, unmoving mask, as many of you uh, noted, and that's what makes this character, <clears throat> excuse me, um, particularly creepy, right? Because he has unmoving facial expressions. Um, <clears throat> sorry, not to mention the fact that he is um, literally sitting in bed beside a sort of man, not sort of man, a man who um, has just awoken, right? And he's going to offer him a treat. And that, that idea of offering him something, giving him something, is also dubiously sexual. Um, think about how eating is a very sensuous, uh, specifically because it is so physical, right? The activity uh, is a very sensuous action. Uh, and that too is the creepy undercurrent uh, of the ad, right? That um, it is uniting these, uniting these seemingly disparate and yet not entirely removed uh, and separated items like food consumption and sexual consumption. Um, it's being united. And the figure uniting them becomes the icon of creepiness, right? Uh, the, the plasticky Burger King King, right? Without a moving face um, or without a moving expression on his face. Um, the, sorry, I'm going to drink water now. Uh, the, 
What I find especially creepy about the the character uh, and about the ad ad's ethic on the whole is that fast food, right? Uh, we talked about the temporality and how creepiness is about a slowing down of our sense of discomfort and unease and hesitation. Um, fast food, fast food is convenient, right? And it, it is supposed to rapidly, immediately even satisfy us, right? Uh, with little to no expense. So this the cheapness, the everyday access that we can have of uh, to to uh, fast food is what makes it very attractive. And of course, uh, some of those ads um, detail, right? The king is dishing out money, um, putting money in people's pockets. Um, it is cheap, and its cheapness is its value, right? Um, think again about the aesthetic and how um, it's it's the cheaper form, uh, a cheapened form, as I had said, of of um, horror, right? So there are there are multiple ways in which this ad is is pressing our buttons and familiarizing us with creepiness. It is showing us how um, our sense of fast food uh, is in fact not entirely different from the ways in which our aesthetics of creepiness are constructed. Right? Our sense of fast food is constructed around certain ideas and certain promises made by um what what it what it entails right what it um promises made by the fast food industry about what it is um our sense of creepiness has some overlaps with what the product of creepiness promises us um <clears throat> What I find particularly creepy about the Burger King ad is how we forget these commonalities, right? How um, when we're saying, what the hell? Why put, why put this guy in bed with a guy when all the ad is about is food, right? Why make it a queer sexual moment? Um, because um, because our relationship to food and to fast food particularly is absurd right the queerness of this moment um, is supposed to register that absurdity I think we miss that if we think about just the um, just the sexual inappropriateness um, of fast food ads like um, like the Burger King ad but if we think about other ads that also have to do with uh, fast food or fast consumption of something um, think about those um, there was some sort of a Hardee's or it's another fast food burglary ad where um, there is a female model, right, very scantily clad, sitting on um, a truck, which is in turn on a ship, and it's very funny. Um, and it's like she's chomping down on a burger or something. Think about Doritos ads where, you know, you have these really sexy female uh, models who are um, who are somehow involved in eating Doritos, right? Uh, there are a lot of um, beer ads, of course. Um, there are a lot of food consumption, fast food consumption ads that are heteronormative and that draw on sexual energies. Um, we don't find those creepy. We might find them objectionable. Um, I have to stop my lecture again. 
But please remember that those are also being played upon in this particular episode.